Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third here on the back deck of the Safe Charter 5. How are we doing here early in April? Frosty conditions, snow on the shoreline, heavy southeast wind. Well, the tail's in the bucket. Tell the tale about what's going on here today. And at the back of the boat right now, my buddy Joe Butts from the state of New Hampshire. You have a whale on, mister. Yes, I do. He's taking a little bit of line, but I'm winning. I believe inside rod, wheel to the left, Jim, that we're looking at, uh, I know we've got a uh, Fat Nancy Wiggler loaded on that side, and I'm trying to remember what the inside rod is. Purple Clown. Thank you, Jim. Jim Roy up there at the wheel. Cover of Lake Ontario Outdoors magazine this month. Slow her down just a little bit. Good bend in the rod here. You can see Joe's playing them perfectly. One of the things we like to do is have the angler come right to the transom, knees against the pad. A little more speed, Jim. 10 o'clock. And the reason that we keep that rod at 10 o'clock is so that if the fish wants to power away, it can act as a shock absorber. We got plenty of light drag on that rod so that if he wants to take line, he can. We're getting to the business end of it here, Jim. There it is, slow her down, nice big brown. Stay right with me. Up. Easy neutral. Easy, easy. Huge brown, huge brown. Keep him coming, Joe. Giant Jimmy. Wind down, bud. I knew when he tanked it that it was a huge whale. Back up now, back up, easy, easy, easy. Got him. Man, man, give me some speed. Look at the thickness of this brown. An absolute stud in the net. We bring him in. Whoa. That is an off in the net. Let's show him that spoon. This is getting a lot of play this year here on the South Shore with the Safe Charter Fleet. Clearing waters today in a southeast wind. There is the purple clown that's been so deadly. Joe, tell me about fighting that fish, buddy. That fish was, we pulled in a lot of fish today, but you could tell once that fish hooked up, he was a big fish. Here he is, everybody. Let's take a look at this whale of a brown trout. Just an absolute stud. Joe, that is uh, number nine, the ninth fish that we're looking for here today. Tell me about fighting that fish. We knew we had a good one when the rod bent over, didn't we? We knew once that rod bent over, that fish was a big fish. And we pulled in a lot of fish today and let a lot of small ones go. But we knew this was a keeper as soon as it hooked up. Yep, he is a hog. Look at the belly on this fish. And look at what's cool. I'm going to come up sideways. You can see the thickness down the back of this fish. And that's always the telltale mark of a giant brown. That's the way it is on the South Shore with the Safe Charter Fishing Fleet. Here's your Safe Charter tip on setting planer board rods. One of the things that I've noticed with fishing with customers, fishing with captains that are beginning to train with the Safe Charter Fleet, is that the devil's in the details and how you actually set your planer board presentation up and actually attach your planer board line to the carrying line on the planer board is critically important. We try to minimize opportunity loss in the Safe Charter Fleet, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I've already got this particular rod out 140 feet, so I want you to follow me as I show you what we do each and every time that we set a rod when we're planer board fishing. We disengage the reel, and you can hear that the clicker's on. That way it can't free spool and we can't have any tangles. What we do is put the release, and I'm using an offshore release. And what's nice about this is that inside the core of that release is a spring. That spring can slide. If I put the tip of the pliers in here and push it down, if I move it to the back, there's less tension on the pads of the release. If I move that spring to the front, it increases tension. So what's cool about these releases is that they're foolproof in the set, but more importantly, it gives the fishermen a wide range of adaptability as far as pressures of the set. When we're spoon fishing for browns, we don't need a lot of weight on the pinchers, on the pinch pads of that release. But if we're trolling deep build bombers for walleyes in August at 3.2 knots, you better believe you're gonna need all the pressure 
that that particular re release can exert. So now once we're into position here, we've got a set light for browns. We simply take the line and you'll notice I sweep my hand down the rod blank, grab the line and I bring the line down and I stand it in the holder. The long line is already set, we're setting underneath it. Now, as I come up the side of the boat, release is still in my mouth, I grab the line here, and I twist. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna change positions with you, Jim. Let me slide in here. Now I open, come right this way, right over here. Now I open to the back of the boat. And this is what we teach, spatial awareness when we're planer board fishing. The reason that I come up in this position is that I'm now aware of everything that's happening at the back of the boat. Still got this here between my fingers. If a rod strikes over here or one hits in my hand, all I have to do is release the line, pick up the rod that the fish is on, and there's no loss of time or movement in setting the hook on that big fish. Now, we'll reset it once again. I'm gonna pull the line down, standing in its holder, bring the line up underneath. I'm watching my set. I wind this. Now you'll notice that I've got a shower curtain clip here. I wanna pinch the line in the pad so that it draws towards the boat. I'm gonna put it in the pad and I'm gonna pull that loop down until there's hardly any tag end showing. Then I'm gonna lightly pinch the tip to set it. Now, you'll notice this is in position to bring the line down and clip down quickly over the top of the line. I don't want it the other way because if the release was the other way, now the line coming back to the boat is pulling it in this fashion out of the release. That creates more abrasion on the line. When you come create more abrasion on the line, you have the opportunity of breaking that carrying line sooner because you constantly have a pinch point in a certain position on your line. So when we put that on the monofilament, we want to pull that tag line down through, set it, and we want to make sure that this line is drawing towards the boat. Also, that the clip on the shower curtain ring is down, so when you reach up, it's in and it's on. Now, we release, and the release slides down the planer board line. Now, simply pick the rod up, pay it out the proper distance that you need it away from the fishing vessel, and then by engaging the reel and standing that in the holder, the set's completed and it's ready to fish. The devil's in the details with these things. You want to set the same all the time and be prepared as you set so that when a big fish strikes, like the one that just got caught, you're going to be prepared as an angler to take advantage of that situation. That's exactly what we did today. I'm Captain Bill Safe the Third, and that is your safe charter tip on setting planer board releases in the spring of the year.